they win the NFC. It wins seven out of eight. The game before that, the game after this one. We can, I think the tempo of the offense has been great until you get to the red zone and then Nick Mullins, that thing in his DNA where he turns the ball over, it's gone the wrong direction. Yeah, Sean Oven, for this Vikings team overall, Flores and the defense has done a really good job of limiting the Bengals and like you said, Chris, they're moving the ball up and down the field, but the Bengals have been able to come away with those turnovers and then for Jake Browning on the offensive side, they just haven't done it from the ground nonetheless. Anybody check to see if B.J. Hill's among the league leaders in interceptions now? That's consecutive weeks. If he was talking trash last week to the defeats, <laughs> it's only going to get worse this week. B.J. Hill, the big man showing they got hands, too. So the Vikings missed on an opportunity to double dip there at the end of the first half and here in the second half as Kane Wanwu is standing in the middle of his own end zone ready to return the kick. Pearson boots it away. Wanwu is going to return it from the two. Goes all the way across field with a flag down behind the play. And so it looks like the Vikings will start this drive deep in their own First end. Foul. Left side block. Receiving team number 33. Half the distance the goal. First down. That's on Brian Asamoa, a native Ohioan in the Columbus area. All right, let's check in with Steve Weiss. Steve? Hey, guys, my coach Kevin O'Connell said that he challenged his team to play better in all three phases. In fact, the best they played all season. He also said he told quarterback Nick Mullins, do not play hero ball. All right, makes some sense, particularly in the red zone. Field goals are are good things too. Yes, it took points off the board. We're looking at a seven to three score, but in reality, the Vikings should be up at least 13 to three, possibly 21 to three if they take advantage of those opportunities down there in the red zone. Vikings will start with the ball at their own seven. Ty Chandler, who had a solid first half, sees the rock. Good cut, bounces outside. Works against Jordan Battle, and that is a big game for the Vikings to get him out of a hole. They've done so well. They started this, this second half off the same way they started the game. The big guys up front, even Jordan Addison coming down to seal the edge on a really good block right there. And Ty Chandler getting up the field. Let's see how much more Kevin O'Connell is willing to put the ball in Nick Mullins' hands with the turnovers he had in that, set, in that first half. 12 carries for 68 yards as you take a look at the Vikings' first half possessions. As we mentioned, they pretty much did what they wanted against this Bengals D, except point, put points on the board. Battle there to stop Chandler after a short game. Both of these teams started the game off with drives where they went down and put points on the board, and then both offenses weren't able to finish. You said it with the Vikings. They got down there for the Bengals. They missed on a deep one to Jones over the middle that Browning wish he had back. But since then, we saw two drops in that first half from T. Higgins as well, if you count the long one of him not being able to hold on to it. Mullins throws and connects with Justin Jefferson a few yards shy of the 50 and then he gives it to the Bengals bench that's as good a throw as Mullins has made all day Justin Jefferson just makes it look so easy you're seeing him down here at the bottom of your screen the way he weaves within his routes, DJ Turner trying to stay on top of him right there. And Jefferson's looking at the sideline like, man, this is just what I do. Welcome back. I'm here, I'm on the field, and I'm going to have a day. His old college teammate, Jamar Chase, on the other sideline made headlines this week when he said, listen, I'm number one. I don't care who's number two. And Justin Jefferson said, I'm not even going to answer that with a reply. He knows who's number one. Chandler, spin move and gets into Bengals territory. Good, strong run. Interesting season for the minute. A little tired. Hey, Gio, Second and Gio. six for the Vikes. No, hey, no, no, Wan Wu in the backfield. Mullins looking left, throwing left, and connecting. That's another first down for Jordan Addison, who's having a fantastic game. That's back-to-back -back throws we've seen from Mullins. And you take this for 
for granted his ability. He's standing in the pocket, and he's putting these throws on the money on the sideline as DJ Turner is barreling down on Jordan Addison and a really good catch to corral that one on the sideline. It's a pair of rookies going at it. One from USC, one from Michigan. And the Vikings have another first down inside the Cincy 40. Mullins just grounds it because Justin Jefferson was blanketed by the Bengals. And that's okay, too. Definitely okay. Better than the alternative, what we saw in the first half. And that was a play where we were looking to possibly run the ball and was a run pass option. And Mullins was looking to get the ball to the outside. And everybody else is run blocking. And then Mike Hilton right there in the middle, he jumps it. He doesn't allow the pass right there. That is a tremendous job of him understanding. And we're watching Zach Taylor go nuts right there. I think he wanted an intentional grounding. That ball could be behind the line of scrimmage possibly. Second and ten, Chandler again. And it's Miles Murphy who's having a really solid game as the first round pick for the Bengals. All right, uh, that's Nick Mullen's son. Come on, buddy. It's all right, you're, you're, your dad's playing well. Luke, let's go. Screens. Big third down. Yeah, he's on screen time. Kids love screens. But you're right, it is third and nine. I gotta imagine he's all tuned in on NFL Plus right yeah. now. Has the headphones on. Chris, he wants to hear what me and you are saying Absolutely. about his dad in this game. Hey, kiddo, don't worry. We'll get you a discount after the game. <laughs> Consider it our holiday gift from us to you. Third and nine. Mullins just gets the snap away. Pressured again. Throws it off his back foot. Caught. It's caught by Addison. He's gonna go all the way in for a touchdown. Mullins beats the blitz, and the Vikings have their second score of the game. Nick Mullins has that gunslinger mentality, and when you take it away from him sometimes, you miss on plays like this, falling to the ground, really probably an ill-advised throw, but he's able to find Jordan Addison, who gets his fingertips on that ball, as we're going to see DJ Turner going underneath, and look at that catch. Scrapes it right off the carpet, picks it up, and is rolling for the touchdown. His young son, Luke, he woke up, picked his head up, said, Dad, that's how you do it. The PAT is good, so I wonder if Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson are still Luke's favorite players. <laughs> Maybe it's... And they have a 14-3 lead after the 37-yard touchdown from Nick Mullins to the rookie Jordan Addison. Joseph kicks it off, and it'll be another touchback. Pro Bowl game. Bengals have been blanked since their opening drive and have just 101 total yards on the day. Mixon trying to find his way, and he does so. Past the 30, lowers his shoulder, and a nice gain on first down. And that looks like Jonathan Bullard for the Minnesota Vikings that's grabbing his right ankle. So we are going to step away as the Vikings check on their defensive lineman up 14 to 3. Jonathan Bullard got up off the field under his own power headed inside the blue tent. We will keep you posted as Jaqueline Roy has entered in his place along the Vikings defensive front. Pitch out to Brown. He's got some space and a first down. DJ Wanham on the stop. So now Jake Browning will obviously be has gotten in the lineup and he just has brought a different spark to this offense when he has the ball in his hands. His twin Sydney, a third round pick, a safety for the Philadelphia Eagles, will be playing Monday night against Seattle. In the meantime, that's Charlie Jones who does finally catch his second NFL pass for a short game. Bring up about third and seven. Pardon me, second and seven. So now if you're Jake Browning, he hasn't faced a ton of double-digit deficits in his life, what's the mentality? 
Be smart with the football. There's still plenty of time in this second half. Don't think that you need to go out there and make a huge play right away. Just continue to move the ball down the field. Browning looks, throws, and that ball is picked off by a Caleb Evans. The zone defense does the job for coordinator Brian Flores, and let's see what sort of celebration this defense has planned. Okay, we got you. How do you grade it? Well, that, that was, that was, I'll probably give that about a two, but it's hard. Last week was so good with the cake stand. When you come back and just throw the ball up in the air, it's a tough one to follow up on. But this Vikings defense, I just said Browning, Take it play by play. Don't try to be too, try to do too much. He had his flat guy wide open, and Tanner Hudson tries to make the big play down the field, and Evans takes the ball away. An easy interception. Harrison Smith was right behind him to maybe intercept it himself. Browning right there doing what Kevin O'Connell said Mullins needs not to do. Don't try to make it into hero ball. The Vikings. Najee Thompson, who's their rookie extra defensive back, is the choreographer, by the way, of all the defensive celebrations. Not sure we'll be seeing that one anytime in the near future. Chandler muscles out a couple of yards there. So you just saw a uh, probably one. Well, yeah, he said game situation didn't <laughs> call for it. You gonna buy that? Nope. He didn't have the right dance moves, probably. Mullins, plenty of time, fires downfield, and it is caught. Jefferson again between two defenders and letting them know. Gain of 14 on the play. There are certain guys in this league that are just special. We all know Justin Jefferson is one of those. That is probably pass interference right there on the Wouzier. Jefferson still able to come away with the ball with his left arm being held onto. That's one of those guys where if there's only one defender on him, you just throw him the ball because you know he'll come away with it. Fifth catch on the day for Jefferson, who was held to two in his return last week in his return out in Vegas. Little dump pass to Chandler. Weaves his way. Nice first down gain. And now if you're Nick Mullins, once again, just keep adding points on the scoreboard because this offense is moving. They are, and Kevin O'Connell's done a really good job of the rhythm of the offense, of giving the ball to Ty Chandler, mixing the screen in there, finding opportunities for Justin Jefferson one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and then using Jordan Addison in the slot to take the ball down the field. So just continue to make the correct decision play after play. A game manager, I would say, opposed to a changer today. Cam Newton would agree. <laughs> Second and five, Mullins going to throw it. And it's Jefferson again, and it's another Vikings first down. Welcome back, Justin Jefferson. Boy, has this team missed him in the last couple months. Showing the sideline work right here, jumping up. It's push right there. All right, we got left foot, right wow. foot, and that is a catch right there. Justin Jefferson knows how to get it done. That is some pretty footwork right there. A little toe jack swag, as Nate Burleson used to say. What show was he on? I heard it was good morning football was one that he was really dynamic on. Okay. All right, little Mullins, he's back with us. <laughs> Screen time's done. He's back to live action. Chandler bounces outside and a nice solid gain of eight yards on first down. Good block by Garrett Bradbury, the center. You said it, that offensive line, they're moving people out of the way and allowing Ty Chandler, it's not until he's five or six yards down the field until he faces his first contact from this Bengals defense. O'Connell, he's been mixing it up. I would expect him to go play action here on second and two, try to get him to bite on the run and get something over the top, maybe take a shot at the end zone right there and try to, instead of driving it all the way through the red zone. And for Chandler, those 87 yards on the ground, that is a career high. Filling in for the injured Alexander Madison. Second and short, and whistles and a flag. A little bit of motion on the Vikings. Ball start. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's the left tackle, Christian Derisaw. His exposition. They had the blitz, and a lot of that was Derisaw showing up for a huge matchup against Trey Henderson. Mullins, he's got Oliver 
open. Nice catch, but not much yardage. Mike Hilton all over that play. All right, bringing up a third down right here, down in the red zone. This is an opportunity for Minnesota. They already have three points on the board is the way you like to look at it. Can they pick up this yardage? I would expect them to possibly try to find the back coming out of the backfield. And I would expect Cincinnati on the other side, a double team of TJ Hawkinson and Justin Jefferson. He's going to force Mullins to get the ball to somebody other than those two. Crowd getting loud on third. Mullins fires incomplete. A miscommunication between the quarterback and Hawkinson. Yeah, he was looking for Justin Jefferson, just not enough time. And we're going to see Jefferson matched up on the outside right here. There's going to be some contact down the field right there. I think that's fine, though. And that's one of the things we used to always say as a DB, do business as business is being done. We haven't seen a lot of interference calls or holdings or legal contact in this game. They're allowing the guys in the back end to play today. So now Greg Joseph on for his first field goal attempt of the day. This one from 39. And he has now made 50 straight inside the 40. And the Vikings... Is and what that goes along with. Chris, I thought he was borrowing that from your closet for a second. So? It's a rental. <laughs> that thing's going to be back by 5 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Joseph kicks it away. Travion Williams... He's going to watch it sail over his head. Double catch by a Vikings player this season. Uh, a little namaste for Nick Mullins on the <laughs> sideline with a two-touchdown lead. And so now it's up to Jake Browning. He'll hand it out to Chase Brown. It's a five-yard gain as the undrafted rookie Ivan Pace Jr. celebrating his 23rd birthday with his family here. Purchased 10 tickets, by the way. Family is an understatement. He said he's going to have 40 to 50 people. But only game. pay for the 10. Undrafted rookie. He understands that. Yeah. I can't pay for everybody to go. You weren't at the high school game. I don't need you to come to the NFL game. But a ton of family members. A really cool feeling for him to be able in his rookie year to come back home and play in front of so many people that probably helped him to get to the moment he's in now. Went to Colerain High School here in Cincinnati. Then Miami University just down the road before finishing up as a Cincinnati Bearcat. Browning. Pressure. Throws, caught by Mixon, and he gets close to the first down. Troy Dye stops him. Kudos to Browning for just keeping that play alive. I'm not so sure it was a wise throw. Really good job by him, able to shake free of the of Dye right there as he's coming in free for the sack. And just the way the Vikings attacked the ball, Daniil Hunter going for the ball, Mattel is going for the ball, and then even on the finish, Dye is going in there with the punch, trying to get it loose. Really good job by Browning getting away and making something out of nothing, bringing up a third and one situation for them right now. And with three minutes to go in the third, a critical third down for the Bengals. Browning throws, Hudson gets it, and gets up close to the 40. Cameron Bynum on the stop. Really good job by Brown. You saw him go with the pump fake right there. The Vikings playing zone coverage. And Hudson wasn't open when he first got to his back foot. And he stuck with it and allowed them to clear and open up that zone. As you're seeing him on the outside right there. Forced Bynum to have to back up and get to the receiver and pick up the first down. Bengals last week played from in front the entire way against the Colts. So now being down 14, a little bit of a new experience for Browning in the starting role. Browning looking left, throws to Hudson, gets it inside Vikings territory, taken down by Murphy at the 45. Gain of 14. Find those soft spots you can make plays down the field on them. Jamar Chase very, very quiet since the opening quarter. Just two catches and two targets on the day. There's Browning. It's Irv Smith. The former Viking gets it inside the 35. Steve Weish, what do you have down there? The Bengals head coach Zach Taylor told me as long as they don't take negative plays like they took in the first half, they can have drives like this. Now it's a matter of sustaining now that they're getting in scoring position. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Field goal on their opening drive and nothing since then. Huh. Okay.
once again, the Bengals, one of a half dozen AFC teams sitting at seven and six, currently the 10 seed in the playoff chase. He'll swing it out, and the ball's caught by Travion Williams. Minimal gain as the Vikings were all over it. This drive right here, Browning's doing a good job of just not holding on to the ball too long. He's getting it out right away, whether that's to the guys on the outside right there with Williams scooping it up off the turf, making a nice catch over the middle to Irv Smith. As soon as he's hitting his back foot, he knows where to go, and he's getting the ball out of his hands. Where earlier in the game, we saw him hold on to the ball a little too long. Just saw a frustrated Brian Flores, even though his team hasn't given up a touchdown in three games. Browning, there's Chase inside the red zone and inside the 15. Jamar Chase getting behind the zone defense right here. They're running some cover, too, so you're going to see Byron Murphy. His, his job is to get hands on the receiver. Harrison Smith is over top of him, and he's able to make the tackle there. Only his third catch, you said it earlier, Chris Rose. The one thing, talking to Brian Flores, he said he wanted to take Jamar Chase away at all costs, and he's done that so far today. Bengals are driving as we have reached the end of the quarter.